Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right. First of all, one thing I want to know is, who do you suppose won this staring contest? Look, <laughs> don't they look like they're having a staring contest here? That's funny to see. Anyways, uh, so there's a lot of concerns I have about what's going on in the Middle East. Uh, like I said, Iraq's been trying to stay out of all the commotion that's going on out there. But, you know, there are other nations out there that seem hell-bent on dragging Iraq into these wars. First of all, you have freaking Iran, of all people. So Iraq vows to take Iran to UN after t- attack on Israeli spy base. This is in Iraq. Iran launched missiles into Iraq. This is an act of war. So civilians killed in strikes on or about include millionaire Curtis businessman and his family, medical sources say. Again, you guys got to remember, Kurdistan does not want the U.S. to leave Iraq, even though over in Baghdad, they do. So I'm wondering if this has anything to do with it. I might be wrong, but it's just interesting that as soon as Kurdistan made their stance saying that they didn't want the United States to leave, then all of a sudden these bombings start happening. It says Iraq has vowed to take Iran to the UN Security Council after Iran Revolutionary Guard claimed they had attacked an Israel espionage headquarters in Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdistan region. Iran said it was attacking in defense of its sovereignty and as a counterterrorism measure in response to an Islamic State suicide attack in Kerman this month that killed more than 80 people. The suicide attack was claimed by the Islamic State branch based in Afghanistan, but Iran has claimed Israel had in some way aided the deadly attack. Let's just be honest. I think this has more to do with the fact that Kurdistan wanted the United States to stay behind. So here you got Iran now bombing in Iraq. It says Iraq recalls ambassadors, summons Iran's charged affairs over strike in Erbil. So, you know, here's my thing. If they take them to the United Nations, what is the United Nations going to do? Spank them? Put them in timeout? They already have a crap load of sanctions against them. What more could they do to Iran? I guess they could put more sanctions, but uh, yeah, I don't know what Iran has to lose. I don't think that's going to be much of a deterrent to keep them from striking whoever the hell they want to. Especially when you have Biden sending them over billions of dollars all the time, just like Obama did. Iraq recalled its ambassadors from Tehran for consultation and summoned Iran's charge de affairs in Baghdad. On Tuesday, in protest over Iranian strike on northern Iraq that killed several civilians overnight. So they had a delegation over there in Iran and they were called back as a means of protest. So this is what we didn't want. We don't want Iraq to get dragged into these things. But again, you know, sometimes I feel sorry for them. Sometimes I don't. It just depends on the situation. But in this case, it really does look like Iraq is trying to get on the right path and have Iran launch missiles into Iraq. That's an act of war. But wait, there's more. Yeah, there's more. Now you have Turkey doing airstrikes target northern Iraq and Syria. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. Poor Iraq, man. So you have Iran launching missiles into Iraq. You have Turkey doing airstrikes in Iraq. Attacks extend a surge in violence across Turkey's southern borders as regional spillover of a war in Gaza continues. Turkey's military has carried out air raids against Turkish fighters in northern Iraq and Syria. The overnight air raid destroyed 23 targets, the Turkish Ministry of National Defense said on Tuesday. The operation extends a recent escalation in violence across Turkey's southern border as regional tensions continue to rise amid Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Yeah, so that happened earlier today. The upswing in the conflict began on Friday when nine Turkish soldiers were killed in clashes with Kurdistan Worker Party, PKK, that they've labeled, Turkey has labeled them as a terrorist group. Fighters in northern Iraq and Kara responded with the airstrikes and military operations in the area, as well as in northern Syria. So not only are they doing air raids in Iraq, but you have their fighters coming across the border going after Kurdistan soldiers. Not what we want to hear for Iraq. So just the other day, we had Iraq was calling for the withdrawal of U.S. forces. Remember that? Iraqi Prime Minister Al-Sadini 
called for the withdrawal of coalition troops last week after the U.S. strike took out an Iranian-backed militia leader in Baghdad. The continued presence of these troops, mostly U.S. forces, is controversial, not just because of the violence that has broken out in Iraq in wake of the war between Israel and Hamas, but because both sides have hidden agendas. You have al Sidini, the Iranian-backed politicians, asking for the withdrawal of U.S. forces, but then you have Kurdistan wanting them to stay. What my concern was is that this would escalate, and lo and behold, it has. So New Jersey soldier prepares for deployment in Syria and Iraq. Yeah, more soldiers going into Iraq. Soldiers from New Jersey are joining the fight against Islamic militant group in the Middle East. This will be the largest deployment of New Jersey Army National Guard since 2008. So they are amongst 1,500 soldiers from New Jersey's National Guard that are being deployed to Iraq and Syria. So first you had Iraq wanting the U.S. soldiers to get out of there. They wanted them to leave in the coalitions as quickly as possible. But instead of them leaving, now you have more soldiers heading into Iraq. What you don't want to see is a bunch of bombings taking place in Iraq, especially when they're trying to rebuild their infrastructure, especially when they're trying to invite outside foreign direct investment into Iraq. They're holding this international business fair over there. You know, while all the people are there talking about whether or not they want to open businesses in Iraq, you have all this crap going on. Look, nobody's going to feel comfortable opening business and putting employees' lives at risk when there's people bombing their country. And it's not just one country. We have Iran and Turkey bombing targets in Iraq. This is not good. Not at all. So we got to keep an eye on this. Let's just hope that it doesn't escalate. But the fact that we're sending over more soldiers, this is just going to make things worse. We know Iran wanted the U.S. soldiers out. And it was irritating them that they were in Iraq and they were bombing them. And they were using their proxy soldiers to attack U.S. soldiers as well. But instead of it calming down, it's just getting worse. So now we have U.S. soldiers heading over to Iraq, which is what we don't want. Look at that stare down. <laughs> well... This was a concern. Iraq was definitely on the right track, but it appears that at no fault of their own, their country is being bombed by two different nations. Let's just hope whatever's going on, it gets over with quickly so that Iraq can get back on track. Anyways, that's it for now. You guys let me know what you think. Are they going to continue this crap in Iraq or are they, is Iraq going to get dragged into this? I look forward to your comments and I'll catch you later. I'm out.